love this slide. Free will is an illusion. Humans are nothing but moist robots. Just relax and let it happen. Uh, Dilbert, as so often, uh, is getting at something that's very much on the air. And one question I have is, where did Dilbert get this idea? First of all, I think he's right, we're moist robots. That's exactly what we are. That's my term from now on. We're moist robots. Uh, we're robots made of robots made of robots. But that doesn't mean that we don't have free will. It doesn't mean that free will is an illusion. Where does he get this idea? I'll tell you where he gets it. He gets it from a veritable chorus of neuroscientists and psychologists who have recently been saying that and uh, to the general public. And I think that they are making a big mistake. First of all, let me, let me ask you, uh, how many of you people believe that color is real? Hands? How many of you think color is an illusion? Well, in the sense that color is an illusion, do you think that perhaps, say, Sherwin-Williams should be taken to court for selling colors? <laughs> That's... That's somebody who's a real radical illusionist about it. I think most of us would agree. Now, the color, there's, yes, it's an interesting philosophical question, but color is perfectly real in the everyday world, right? I'm going to claim, well, free will is as real as color in the same sort of sense. But it's not just like color. It's also a bit like dollars. Are dollars real? How many people think that dollars are real? How many think that dollars are just an illusion? Yeah. Well, I submit to you that one of the reasons that we all tend to think, well, yeah, money's real, is because we have this nice imaginative crutch. We remember silver dollars and dollar bills, and thank goodness those aren't the only dollars because where would we put all of those pieces of metal, those trillions of dollars that apparently exist and that our lives really depend on? The dollars that we use with our credit cards and, and, and that we argue about you know, on our taxes, those dollars aren't pieces of paper, they're not coins. They are, what are they? They are, they're a social construction is what they are. They are created by the cooperation of millions of people is an institution that provides for the reality of dollars. And you won't find a dollar under a microscope any more than you'll find color uh, in an atom. Atoms aren't colored. That doesn't mean that color isn't real. It just means you have to go up a few levels to see both colors and free will. So now, why do I object to neuroscientists spreading this word about free will. Aren't they just sort of making a philosophical point that might go either way? And I don't think so. Let me tell you a little story. There is a device which could be put in your brain which would cure pretty much your OCD, your obsessive compulsive disorders, a little electrical device. That's true, but now I'm going to tell you a little fantasy story. One day, a neurosurgeon implants this device in a guy's head and says, now your, your, uh, your OCD is cured. You, you don't have to worry about that anymore. But in fact, I want to tell you that our staff here is going to be monitoring you 24-7, and we're going to be controlling your every action from now on for the rest of your life. You will have the illusion of free will, but you won't really have free will. The guy believes her. He goes out into the world, and he starts behaving a little negligently, indulging his whims, getting a little aggressive. Pretty soon he gets in trouble with the law. He goes to court. He says, I don't have free will. The, the neurosurgeon told me I don't have free will. They put the neurosurgeon on in the witness stand. She says, yeah, yeah, I told him that. You know, wasn't true. I was just messing with his head. I wanted to see what would happen. Think about it. She accomplished by what she said to him, what she claimed to accomplish. She disabled him as a moral agent. She took away his free will by telling him that science was taking away his free will. I submit that the neuroscientists who are 
glibly talking about free will as an illusion are, up, are inadvertently accomplishing a similar social mischief of the highest order. Thank you. Thank you. So what that, among other things, demonstrates is that you can do philosophy concisely as well as science. So thank you, Dan. Now, I want to ask you, if I may, while people gather their thoughts for questions, why do you think so many neuroscientists are inclined to do this? Presumably they don't want to disable people, so why do they keep saying this? Good question. I think there's two reasons. First of all, they, they have an old-fashioned idea about what free will would be, and they think, well, if, if you're, our brains are the causes of our, our decisions, then we don't have free will. That's just a non sequitur. That's just uh, uh, naive philosophical thinking. But they have a good motive, and I share their intention and their, their belief. They think that our, our current system of, of punishment, legal punishment, uh, prisons and the like, is, is obscene. It's terrible. They want to reform the system. And they've decided that the way to do this is to say, well, look, nobody should ever be punished because nobody ever ha ever is ever responsible. They're not thinking through the consequences of that. We want to be responsible. We are responsible unless we're, we're wired wrong. Some people are wired wrong. But just because we're wired doesn't mean we're wired wrong. Okay, thank you. Question over here. It seems like there's a, a strong relation between what you're saying and uh, the phenomenon also of uh, coming up with new medical diagnoses and names and objectifications, if you will, of uh, behaviors uh, that are um, in some way or another objectionable or reprehensible to society. So I wondered if you could comment on that. Well, for instance, in the United Kingdom, they have a, a deplorable new policy uh, which was put in by Tony Blair, where people can be indefinitely imprisoned for being dangerous people. Uh, and this is, as it were, a medical diagnosis. It is, uh, it is an extremely uh, uh, unfortunate social trend, and it's being fought, I understand, in the United Kingdom, and I hope we don't see anything like it here. But it is true that as medicine develops, we're going to have new diagnoses of disabilities of one sort or another, which will be correctly seen as to some degree disabling, rendering morally incompetent various people. And we will then diminish, give them diminished responsibility or even declare them totally incompetent. But notice that when we do that, then we sort of take them off off the highway. We, we now require, we, they're no longer free to move around in society if they're really that disabled. Nobody wants that. So I think there's a natural uh, balance to the sort of creeping exculpation of new medical diagnoses because in general people don't want to be diagnosed as no longer competent to have the freedom of the state. Thank you. Yes, please. Most of the time, most of the time when this uh, topic is discussed, I've, I found that there's an underlying assumption that the answer as to whether we would have free will or not would, would apply to all of us. I was wondering what you thought of the idea that maybe some of us have free will and some of us don't. That's a very good point. Um, I've just written a review of a wonderful new book by Adrian Rain. It'll be out in a few weeks on the anatomy of violence. He's a neuroscientist and criminologist who, among other things, has, has studied uh, in scanners the brains of, of killers on death row and psychopaths and the like. He knows more about violence in the brain than, than really just about anybody. It's, a good, it's going to be an important book. And uh, certainly, that book is full of careful diagnoses of the types of people who really don't have free will or who have seriously damaged free will in one way or another. The important thing, though, to remember is that even though there are genetic and developmental and, and environmental uh, causal contributors to that, which are now pretty well uh, understood, it is still a small fraction of the human population that are disabled in any way 
by these conditions. Uh, I, I'll Thank stop you. on that. Maybe quick, one quick <clears throat> question. So the experiments of, I think it's Li Bei, who, Benjamin Li Bei's experiment. Libet, yes. Libet, ben thank Libet, you. Yes. So the uh, brain waves show the decision before people are consciously aware. How does that fit with free will? Fortunately, the gong came because Benjamin Libet's experiments have been misinterpreted by legions of neuroscientists for years. And uh, I have written several chapters and articles on the errors, and there's another book coming out on this. It's, I think it, it's, it's a great mess. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We captured the steps.